Thanks, Courtney and Carly for joining as well. Um, nice to see, well, see everyone's names, not physically see you. Um, I recognize a lot of these names, so great to uh, see a few people in there. Um, so yeah, and, and let me ask this first, just to make sure I'm sharing my the right screen. Can you guys see my Atlas uh, screen right now? Perfect, okay. Uh, so yeah, I, I wanna walk you guys through um, our 2021 version of Human Anatomy Atlas, just to give you a good idea of uh, some of the updates we've had. And I can review some of the uh, most important things for uh, some people might be more newcomers. So we're not gonna sort of go through everything in depth, but I'll touch on a few things for, uh, for beginners as well. Um, so as of, uh, well, a, a few weeks ago now, we uh, unveiled our newest version of Atlas 2021. And the biggest thing uh, that most people are most excited about is our sharing capability. So you're able to uh, use any of these 3D models in here and make your own custom views and make them into uh, little slideshows or what we call tours, and I'll, I'll show you guys those too. But what's even better is now you can, uh, not only can you just make a favorite and pull it up during lecture and show the students, but now you can actually share that with them to their Atlas uh, account um, or vice versa too. And you can also share it across your devices. So I'll get into that stuff, but I just wanted to uh, give you an idea of what we'll touch on today. And that, that will be sort of the most important part that people are sort of excited about. So for anyone that is uh, newer to Atlas, and even for those that have used it a bunch, uh, might be good as a review, Think of Atlas, we have all the different apps, but think of Atlas as our comprehensive uh, general reference app. So all sorts of interactive 3D models, as you can see here on my uh, homepage here, uh, short videos, animations, practice quizzes that are built in here as well for the students for self-guided learning. Um, and this new feature, my library that we'll, we'll talk about that, that has a lot to do with those, uh, that sharing capability. But um, just as a reminder, the different, this subheading, the subheaders here, um, you can look at things from a regional perspective, a system perspective, gross anatomy labs, uh, those sorts of views, if you're looking for more of a dissection or cadaver style uh, view of something. And then, of course, even cross sections, microanatomy, and a whole bank of uh, muscle actions as well. So, for those of you that also utilize uh, Muscle Premium or you're utilizing the full courseware products, so you have access to Muscle Premium, you can find those muscle actions there too, but you can also find a whole bank of them here within. Uh, Atlas, and I'll show you one quick update to those that a lot of people are really pleased about. Um, and I'll, I'll get into that in just a couple minutes. Um, now, one thing, so first what I'll do, just to let you know, is I'll show you a couple of the new specific features in here. Um, I think specifically that you'll find helpful. The first thing being this media uh, tab here, this icon. So we pulled over a bunch of these short videos or animations uh, from our physiology uh, animations app. Uh, so there's a bunch of them in here that we've pulled over. We're just trying to make everything a little more streamlined and put it all in one place. And since Atlas is sort of our flagship or our, our home base or the most go-to app, we wanted to put some animations in here too. So you can see these more general beginner animations uh, or short videos that are built in here. 30 seconds, a minute, sometimes up to two minutes, but nice, short, succinct 
uh, but also detailed videos. And then we also uh, made some new advanced animations. So a lot of good stuff that we've built in here as well that wasn't here before within Atlas. We didn't have the animations within Atlas before. Any questions thus far, just about the general overview of this? Doesn't look like it. Okay. Yeah, let me point out just a couple things. Now this might not be relevant to everyone, but uh, the team worked hard on building out a couple specific features and making a few changes based on things that instructors like yourselves had said. So I wanted to point out a couple of specifics that we, uh, that we fiddled with or added in here. The first being, if I scroll down to the digestive system, and I'll pull up this, this preset model here, for the peritoneum. The peritoneum was something that uh, you could click on before, but now we've added all sorts of detail in here. So for anyone that um, gets that in depth, and if you want to use that, you can come in here similar to when you have a bone or a muscle selected. There's that interactive details tab that'll allow you to take that next step a little more in depth. Now we've added an additional details icon for the peritoneum too. So I just wanted to point this out because this is brand new and this helps in clinical evaluation for the FAST exam. And you can see up here that you can change it from male to female and you can even add the organs in there too. So a lot of people asked about this and as you can see, we, we put it in here um, as one of our newer features. So that's one thing. Another thing we added is spe more specific to uh, the heart and the phrenic nerves. So just another thing, this comes up obviously with a lot of people because even in standard uh, A&P courses, um, you'll obviously focus in on the heart. So um, the pericardium, we, again, something we had in there prior, but now we've put a little more detail or a lot more detail in there for you. So before it was just one selectable structure, the pericardium, that's it. Now you can see that we've put the different layers in there. So we have the fibrous and now the serous pericardium. And even within the serous pericardium, we've put the two different layers within that one layer. So we've just uh, got a little more detailed and there you can see the phrenic nerve as well that's been uh, updated a little bit. Just a couple small but really helpful tweaks that a lot of instructors were uh, requesting, these sorts of things. Just a couple other little things. Um, I think I have a saved view for this next one, just for the sake of time. Uh, let's see here. Yes. So when it comes to the female reproductive system, we made a little bit of an update there as well. Uh, we, what we did was we just added some more, or I should say some more specific detail when it comes to blood supply and innervation. These structures here were not individually selectable before. Um, Atlas 2021 came out, so it wasn't nearly as detailed. Now, as you can see, these nerves here, these arteries and veins here, these are uh, individually selectable. And then just like any other structure, you can come over here and read about each of those structures and see any uh, pathologies and pronunciation and that sort of thing. So just a little bit more detail we've added in there as well. And one more specific thing I wanted to touch on, uh, going back to those muscle actions, is, and I can just pull up any old muscle action here. You can see the visual of this update. So you can see 
when this muscle is not contracting, we gray it out now. Because before, I guess uh, students were sometimes getting a little confused on, for example, which one of these two actions is shoulder flexion. So now it's a little more clear, it'll gray out when it's not shoulder flexion. And Rebecca says, this is great, yeah, that is great. Yeah, we had a lot of people excited about this in particular because if you think about it before, we were really just narrowing it down to two, almost two possible answers, but now it's more specific. It gives them exactly what is what. So that's one really handy uh, update there. Those are just some of the super specifics. Again, it might not apply to everybody, but I wanted to point out each of those four things just in case uh, that comes up in your specific courses. Um, now, let me pull up a couple more things before we get into the actual sharing of content. So I'll, I'll come in here and why don't I pull up uh, just a general model here in the circulatory system. Uh, a couple things I wanna point out. Uh, for those of you that are new, uh, you, you won't have noticed this um, because you're new, but for those of you that are uh, coming back and have been using this, one thing to point out in Atlas 2021 is over here, the systems tray. So you may have noticed it's always been over here in the mobile version of the app, but prior it was actually down here in the bottom left. So we're just, we moved a few things around. So, and that's one thing that's sort of hidden over here on the left. So just wanted to point that out where the systems tray, what you could also think of is um, almost a, a bulk addition or subtraction tool where you can add an entire body system for an entire region and that sort of thing. Um, that is over here on that pop-out menu on the left. So we haven't removed it. Some people have uh, missed it, um, but it, it's still there. Don't worry, it's just over here on the left-hand side. Uh, one other thing that is really helpful that was here before, but we, we made it even better and we sort of flushed it out and um, made it a lot more detailed is this related content here. So the goal of this update for Atlas 2021 was uh, so that you didn't necessarily, you or the student, don't even necessarily have to go back to that main menu that much now because there's that nice natural flow of things where if I have the right atrium selected or any part of the heart, you can see in the related content, it'll pull up anything that we think is relevant. So related uh, short videos or animations, even some cross sections as well, other models. So maybe just a specific model of the heart itself. So it just allows you to more naturally flow from uh, physiology to pathology to videos to interactive models without having to go back here, look in the circulatory system, go over, find something good. It's just a lot more natural to navigate that way. And then on a related note, uh, and then I'll stop for any questions, is these arrows in the top left here, same sort of thing. They just make it a little bit more easy for that natural flow where you can easily jump back and forth from view to view. Uh, before we had uh, not necessarily dead ends, what you would call them, but um, it was harder to navigate from uh, one model to the other back to the previous page sometimes. So this allows you to easily toggle back and forth from model to model. Um, so let, I'll pause there for a second. And was there any questions that come up that came up? Uh, yes, we have a couple of them. Um, first one from Barbara. Uh, did the sternocleidomastoid uh, model uh, get updated? Um, I don't 
know the answer to that. Um, this this would have been in, in one of the, you know, in the muscle actions. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know what? It sounds familiar, but we can double check it and see if that specifically had been updated. But that uh, okay. structure in particular sort of rings a bell to me that it, it had been talked about uh, as something that people wanted uh, to be worked on. Let's see. Fast exam, the muscle actions. That might that might be a little more granular than what we have listed for the release sure. notes for the the most updated thing. But I can always ask. Yeah, let's make a note of that, and we can get back to and was this was that uh, that was from Barbara. From Barbara, okay. All right. Um, Let's see, uh, can we, uh, this is from Erica, uh, can we remove the left or right verbiage um, in the quiz questions and just have one choice now in courseware? Okay, so um, for Erica, I guess the, the question here from my end is, um, are you referring to these practice quizzes within Atlas itself or for courseware users, the graded quizzes? So I guess I could tell you both answers. Um, if you're within courseware uh, for courseware users. Yeah, the graded quiz is uh, a courseware. Okay, so. cool. Um, so let me actually just mention this first. For anyone, because there could be some people on this call that don't necessarily have uh, the full courseware product and they might just be using Atlas. So for Atlas itself, these are just practice quizzes. So these don't go into a grade book or anything, the ones built right in here. Uh, these ones, you can't necessarily go in and edit. These uh, just come as they are because they're hard coded in there. So these ones you can't fiddle around with um, right or left if, it, if the question is locate the right humorous or whatever it is. When it comes to those of you guys that use uh, courseware, the answer to that is uh, yes. So you could definitely go in and uh, number one, utilize those existing, oops, existing questions, uh, or you could even make your own questions. So here's an example here, uh, select the right ventricle. if if you just wanted to say select the ventricle or select, forget about right and left, select one of these structures. You could absolutely uh, either clone an existing question and go in and uh, edit that question, or you could uh, create your own question and set it up that way, where if you're setting up your own question, you get to decide what constitutes as a correct answer. So it sort of depends on how you want to attack it, but the, the short answer is yes, you can customize that if you just want to make it a little bit more general and not necessarily uh, have right or left. Uh, okay. uh... Uh, we have a question from Ruth about how we can update to the latest Atlas version. So, oh, so you mean when you are in, um, within the web? That's what I was about to say. The web okay. versions are always the most updated. I was just, yeah. So as Carly said, the web versions will update automatically. And uh, when it comes to, and Carly, you can correct me if I'm wrong, when it comes to the mobile versions, um, most people, I think uh, that should be updated. But if not, um, I guess you could reach out to your rep about that specific thing. If you still have an older version um, of Atlas, is that right, Carly? Yeah, it looks like um, Ruth clarified. So this is the mobile version. Okay. 
For mobile, if you need the most updated version and you have not received it, depending on if you have a site license of a specific year, um, the mobile applications will stay within that year. And Courtney, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know if you know this. Um, but if you would like the most updated, um, you can get in contact with your rep and we have codes that we can actually send to you um, so that you're able to have the most up-to-date version of it. But if you have a site license, um, that's dependent on your subscription because sometimes the subscription stays within that year and the mobile application can only be, let's say, 2019. Um, so you got to talk to your rep. Um, and if you don't know who your rep is, um, let me know the name of your institution and I'm more than happy to give you their email address and contact information. Yeah, and, and as far as those codes go, um, uh, those codes will only work for, for you personally. Um, so uh, it, it wouldn't like disseminate to, you know, the rest of your classes. Um, so uh, to, to update everything, you know, in, in courseware, uh, that would be something that you would have to talk to your rep about. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, so Ruth says uh, Ivy Tech Community College. And Ruth, okay. I will make sure. Um, if you don't mind, actually, I can look, we're good. I can make sure that your rep reaches out to you about that. I'm going to actually write a note down right now so that I can make sure that your rep reaches out to you about that mobile uh, download. Okay. And uh, Heidi um, had a question about when presenting, can we get rid of the table on the right? Yep. So this, this over here, this menu here. So I just did a quick example of that um, just visually when, when they were chatting. So yes, you could. So you can select something and you can uh, make that full screen and then continue to navigate it. Um, talk about the different structures and lecture, whatever you need to do. So yeah, you can, you can still highlight things um, and not necessarily have that menu on the right-hand side pop up for the, for the students. And uh, ah, this question is, is so popular and it's on the list. Um, will we be able, this is from Elena, um, will we be able to mix dissection and multiple choice questions in one <laughs> quiz? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Um, wish. <laughs> at some point, I'm sure. It is. Uh, it's coming. It's absolutely on the list because it's yeah. something that um, a lot of people are asking for. Yeah. As part of uh, my job and my two colleagues, uh, Jennifer and Kate, uh, we take down a lot of that feedback when we do our training sessions, just things people are looking for. And that comes up more than anything. So uh, yeah, we, we've, uh, it's on the yeah. list. I just don't know for when exactly they don't, yeah. they don't give us like exact dates because everything, you know, can change on like, you know, drop the hat, but it's on the list. I promise you. Uh, this is from Erica as well. Uh, can I assign quizzes across classes at one time? So can you say that again? Can you assign quizzes? Uh, she asks, uh, can I assign uh, quizzes across classes? I'm guessing like maybe all at once. I think the best solution for this, because I, I read this one earlier, um, is copying a folder or copying a course, depending on how big of an assignment you're getting to. Um, copying your assignment um, or folder, as what I always like to call it to clarify for you all. Um, if you copy that, you can copy that into any single course. The only thing I always like to preface is make sure that you change your due dates and release dates for the new course that you assign it to. And I don't know, Matt, if you want to quick, yeah, if you can quickly show an example, that'd be awesome. Okay, of changing, so of say copying a course, uh, an assignment to a new course. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so that, and that's nice and easy. So that's the good news. Yeah. So if I just come into my courseware and pull up any old um, pre-made sample course here, uh, yes, you could absolutely, you could say, oh, this is great. I really want to copy over, say, the skeletal system. I really like this folder here. 
it's perfect as is, I can easily take that and copy that folder over into uh, a different course. So as you can see here in my dropdown, I just select which of my other courses I wanna pop it into and then off it goes and it'll be in that course. And then of course, um, sort of on that same uh, wavelength, um, just remember that uh, if, if you have multiple sections, some people like to set up or we suggest too, setting it a, a multiple, basically one course for each of the sections helps with uh, keeping the grade books separated out and that sort of thing. So if you click this drop down here next to the course on the courses homepage, you can easily just make a copy for yourself and, and name it section two or, or whatever it is. A follow up question as well. Can you do that for graded quizzes along with assignments? And the answer to that is I think yes, because as long as it's within a folder. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So actually, you know what? That brings up a good point. Um, the answer is yes, uh, but just keep in mind that it, the way that our system is set up, you can't actually just go in. So say I wanted to copy over this joints graded quiz. You can't just copy over one individual assignment. You do have to copy over the full folder, um, but then you could easily just either not publish the other ones or you could copy it over and um, then go ahead and delete the two sections you didn't need, for example. So the quizzing side, it might be easier for Erica to just search that keyword or filter results in the quiz or question bank, depending on what you're looking for, mm -hmm. in that new course that you created to assign the same quiz in both courses. Yeah. Yeah, that's another way to do it too. Um, definitely, in like depending on how many assignments are in a folder too. Um, so you could sort of do it either way where you could do that, copy a whole folder over to another course, or you could just jump into that other course and say, you know what, instead I'll just uh, make a new assignment and I'll go into that quiz bank and grab that quiz that way. So instead of manually copying it over, you could just essentially remake that uh, quiz assignment. You don't have to remake the quiz. You just have to go in and say, I want to make an assignment with this quiz for my other course or section, I should say. Additionally, um, we had a follow-up comment um, in terms of, I don't know who asked it originally. I think it was, it might've been Heidi. It might've been Ruth. I'm, I'm blanking right now who asked it initially, but Rebecca made a very good comment that um, a workaround to create the assignment with multiple quizzes in it um, is creating an assignment with all different types of quizzes in it and assign all three at the same time or publishing them all at the same time so that the students take all three. And let's say you make it due at Friday at midnight, all three, one is multiple choice, one is dissection and one is short answer, that yeah. all three are due at midnight on Friday, let's say. Yeah, that's a nice workaround that a lot of people use. One more question for you, Matt. If the VB could be connected to Blackboard, can students take the quiz from the VB through Blackboard? Uh, I guess the answer to that is <laughs> sort of. So what I mean by that is um, you'll still go, it'll still launch our quizzing app, but you can get there fr directly from Blackboard. So you can be in your Blackboard interface and within there, you can navigate inside courseware. But when you actually click the icon for the quiz, it'll still actually open a new window for you to take the quiz. Um, so that's that's what I meant by uh, sort of. Um, now, the one other thing I want to mention, and then we can show you guys some of that, uh, the sharing stuff, the sharing capability is I, I was just looking through the uh, questions too, and somebody mentioned, I think it was uh, basically, can you label things when you have a model up and you uh, 
uh, how can you label things, whether it's in the full screen or in another way. So the way you would label things is if you click on a structure, you can go ahead and you can add a tag, but what you could also do with those tags is you can then, within the settings, you could even make those blank tags if you want to. And that's in the settings there. And that sort of transitions nicely into uh, that, that idea of customization. And then from those customized views, you guys can share those things with students, with colleagues, uh, and that sort of thing. So what I'd like to do, if there wasn't any other questions, uh, is... We, uh, we, had, we had three more come in like rapid oh, okay. fire. <laughs> no, this is great. Um, all right, so uh, first one was uh, from Olina. Uh, is editing of lab activities already available? And uh, the answer is, yeah, just in, in, a, in a specific course, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so we took we took all of our you know big comprehensive lab activities and we made them into a course that you can pull into your courseware account and they'll be auto graded for you, which cuts down on like hours and hours and hours of grading. Definitely. So just to show you that very quickly. And you can um, edit them. Yeah, that's right. So, and actually, <laughs> uh, Courtney, it might be helpful in your follow up email. Could you maybe include that? Link to it? Yeah. Sure can. Um, yeah. I, yep, that's that's on the list. Yeah, so um, you guys will see what we mean where we, we basically took those PDFs and, and dissected them away and uh, made them into this more customizable and, and auto-graded style instead of just having that PDF style. Um, let's see. Uh, so Carly, you looks like you answered Anthony's question. And uh, uh, we have a question from Arena. Will grades automatically be loaded into Grade Center, which I think is in Blackboard. Sorry, I have a visitor. Um, <laughs> or should I manually download grades from VB and upload them to Grade Center? That's exactly right, That that the latter. So uh, eventually we'll have with the different LMS systems uh, and those of you guys using Canvas and Blackboard are those are the ones we're sort of working with first. Um, but yeah, uh, right now, the way that you can do that to grab those grades is you come into your grade book and there's uh, my student with a 0% grade and you can uh, in the top right corner, click on export CSV. And you can see all those different uh, LMS systems there. So you can export it into a Blackboard friendly CSV and then uh, upload it from there or Canvas or D2L or Moodle or whatever you guys might be using. All right, so. Uh, Oops, sorry. Oh, go ahead, Carly. Um, from Teju, and please excuse my mispronunciation if I did say that very wrong. Um, auto graded labs, I do not see on my courser. Do we have to create such manually? Um, Teju, do you want me to send the link in the chat for the auto graded course? Actually, that's a great idea. Yeah. So, for everyone who is interested in those auto graded uh, labs course to download it to their courseware account, I'm going to go ahead and send that into the chat right now. Feel free to click on that link now or make sure you copy and paste it onto somewhere on your desktop so that you have it for later. Um, and remind me, Matt, it's it's just labeled auto-graded labs, correct? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and while she's doing that, let me, uh, just for the sake of time, I will... Uh, I'll jump into that My Library section and I'll, I'll start sort of diving into that a bit um, to give you guys an idea of, of the sharing capability and, and what exactly we mean by that. So uh, as you can see, we now have this My Library section where it houses 
anything that you've saved. So any favorites that you've saved will be right in here in your favorites. And um, by the way, I didn't actually show you that. So you could come in here and you could fully customize something. You could uh, add those tags like I showed you. You can add notepads in there. You can draw on there. And I, I'll show you that in a couple minutes if we have time. To, I'll make a little drawing too. Uh, and you can what you can do from there is in the bottom right, there's where you can save that view. So you can save that to your favorites. And here, the last one on the right, that's where you can actually take a custom view and you can share it with your students, with your colleagues, uh, whoever you need to share it with. Um, so I have a nice uh, tour or slideshow that I'd like to share rather than just sharing a random little drawing there. Um, so by the way, so here's all my favorites and here's all my tours. For those of you guys that haven't really messed around with tours at all, all that is, is a, if you have at least three favorites, what you can do is you can take at least three favorites and throw them together into a sequential order that's basically a nice little slideshow. So here's a great example. Um, I did not make this one. It's uh, really nice, so I don't wanna take the credit. But this is just an example of uh, what one of our tours might look like, and then I'll show you how you might wanna share this with, with students or with a colleague. Uh, so as you can see here, we have five different pre-made uh, pre-dissected views exactly how I want them. So that way, when I'm then in class, and these are all blank because I had uh, turned that setting on. So I have all these labels here. I have this notepad. I have uh, highlighted structures, and then I have even some drawings and arrows which helps you understand blood flow in this particular case. So that's just an example of something you might have prepared. Uh, it's something you might show in lecture, but also something you might uh, either have the students build as a little project or something you might share with your students uh, just to help them grasp a concept such as blood flow, for example. So what you can do from there is uh, you can share that. So whether you are creating an assignment within Courseware, which I'll show you, or if you're just taking that tour and clicking on this share button here, you can see, you can download it as a still image too, like you used to be able to, but you can also uh, take that share link and you can share it with uh, whoever you need to. And from there, and I shared this with Carly so we could show you the full process and she can pull this up on her end. But, but generally speaking, so let me, so I shared that with Carly. You will also have many people interested in this tour specifically, Matt. So I don't know if you're allowed to or not, but if you don't mind sharing this tour with others, I think Courtney, if you can put it in your follow-up. Oh, absolutely. I, I already have a note to uh, to share oh, some, okay, some cool. tours with you guys. So I won't, I'll, I'll share a couple of them. I'll I'll share the heart one and um, maybe a nervous system one. Or... Yeah, there was a there was a spreadsheet we had with a couple of really nice We ones. do, yeah. So. Um, um, that'd be great if you could include that, yeah. Absolutely. Matt, so, would you like me to pull up that link on my side of things? Say that again? Would you like me to pull up that link on my side of things? To yeah, show yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Um, just to show sort of the full the full circle, but uh, just when she's doing that, um, just so you guys know, if you're on the receiving end, so somebody sends you that link, one of the sharing links, and Carly has uh, it up here. If you're receiving a link and you're pulling it up on your desktop, you can click on that, uh, whoops, the link icon in the top right of Carly's screen. So there's that share link and she can paste it in there. 
So if that that's how you pull it up if you're using it on web. And you can see, there it is. So this isn't just for me, I can share it uh, with my students and everything is gonna stay there. That's, that's another added bonus is prior to Atlas 2021, uh, I wasn't able to do this. I wasn't able to share it. And I also couldn't even save my favorites with these notepads, with these tags, with these arrows on there. Now you can, and that's all gonna transfer over even when you save it and even when you share it with Carly. Um, you want me to show that share that save button, share slash save button? Oh yeah, that's a good idea. So here when I'm on this page, now that I have, let's say my instructor's tour or Matt's tour to be specific, I can always go ahead and download this um, to, as a still image as Matt had said before, but now I can save it in my own library here and I can press save view. Now I can save this one individual view, aka view two or slide two is what I always like to call it. Um, or I can save the entire tour. And I always like to press save the entire tour um, and then it will label it for me. So I can say, Matt, webinar test as the example and then press save. When that's done saving, that will automatically pop up in my, if I go to the my library in my tours. So now I have my Matt webinar test series right here or tour um, and I can always refer back to that as a student and always get back to it. Perfect. Thanks, Carly. Of course. <laughs> um, oh, and by the way, it, if I if I was the recipient or if Carly had pulled that up on her mobile device, it's a little different. And you don't have to if you don't have it ready to go. It's it would be a little different because you, you don't even have to click on that um, that extra step. If you're pulling it up on your mobile app, you just literally click on the link that was sent to you and it should open it up and you're ready to roll on your um, device. Yeah, that's that's right. So um, only when you're pulling it up on uh, the desktop, like Carly had done here, you have to click on that link in the top right, the little link icon um, okay. and have that extra step. So let me, I'm gonna actually pull up my Slack, Matt, and copy that link that okay. you sent me. Perfect, yeah. So, oh, where's your name, Matt, is my question. Oh, is my thing not updated? Maybe not. Hold on one second, everyone. No, that's okay. And that's um, all right if you... Um, we actually have um, some questions that we could answer while Carly yeah. is, uh, is going uh, through that. So uh, sure. from Dennis, um, do sharing um, tours, uh, do they only open in VB? Do they need a VB account? And the answer to that is yes. And, and they need the most up-to-date version. It needs to be Atlas 2021. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. And so it has to be the, the newest version of it. So, so you just, saw... Yeah, sorry, go for it. No, I was gonna say, you saw what Carly did there was, all you have to do is, is click the link that you were sent whether it's sent via email or whatever, and uh, it'll open it, on mobile. It'll open it right up, so you don't have to do that extra step. So there, you see, she pulled it up on her iPad, and um, it still works. So uh, that's the other big thing to remember: is uh, prior to Atlas 2021, not only could you not necessarily share things, but you you didn't really have the opportunity to share it even within your own account across devices. Now you have that one centralized account for yourself. So anything that's in my library on your mobile device is in my library on desktop and, and vice versa. Oh, I could find them. <laughs> so I could find them, but I have not done that yet. But as soon as I sign in, I can save Matt's tour again where we left off. Yep. I can see that as a view. 
which again, it says I'm not signed in again, but I can sign in and save it to my account, which I can access on my desktop as well as my mobile device. Perfect. Yeah. Let me go ahead and stop share my screen. There you go. Cool. We so were there, there were some other questions too? There were, yes, there are two more. Um, so this is from uh, Kirsten. Uh, if I hide labels and share with students, um, do they have the ability to turn on labels, which she doesn't want to happen? Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, that is a good exactly. question. I think, she's sharing I, I think they the can. Answers, yes. Yeah. So this wouldn't, that's a good point. This wouldn't necessarily be used as a, from a quizzing perspective. Um, per se, you certainly could utilize it that way a little bit with the blank tags, maybe in lecture and you're just saying, hey, what's this pointing to? That's yeah, they're good thing. for pop quizzing. Pop quizzing, yeah. But, um, but yeah, I hadn't even thought of that before. Um, so that might've come up here on, I think it was my second slide where these, I had just gone in and I had them blank based on uh, my settings, but yeah, those will be, uh, they'll be able to toggle that on and off in this situation. Yeah, that's good. That's a good point though. That, that's probably something that yeah, I pass along to the team. I know it I had never occurred to me. <laughs> um, and, uh, and then from Rebecca, um, could you clarify, can students create a tour and then share with the instructor? Absolutely. So same exact way me and Carly did. Um, they can do the same thing within their account, their Atlas account. They'll have, um, it'll look the same for them where they can share it with uh, other students or they can share it with um, you as an instructor. They can uh, grab that link to a favorite or a tour and either send it to you as an email or whatever it is. Um, yeah, they can absolutely share from their end also. Um, a smaller question, Matt, if you don't mind showing how to add a tag again. Um, oh yeah. I missed that at the beginning, would love to see it again. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um, so if I jump in here and I can add a tag. So if I just click on the humorous, something nice and simple, within that menu that pops up on the right, we talked about uh, all a few of these icons in here. Um, you can just click right on add tag and there it is. And you can add multiple tags in there. And then within the settings, that's where you can turn those to be blank or not. And sort of on a related note, uh, that drawing tool also, I just want to quickly show you that. So everybody freaks out when they see this. Uh, so don't freak out. It's nice and easy. Uh, you just have to understand it the first time. Um, so all this is doing is it's allowing you after the fact, after you draw a line or an arrow or a circle, after the fact, you'll be able to then still rotate this model and that line or arrow or circle will still be pointed to the right spot. So you can see in this case, maybe I want to have my arrow pointing toward the sternum. So I wanna have the plane that I'm drawing on be the sternum. So I basically take that blue grid and I'm covering up that entire model up until the point where I wanna point that arrow there. So I wanna point it right here. So that means I've covered it up to that point. Now I can start drawing. So now the, the system knows that any uh, orange line that I draw or circle that I make or whatever it is that you're uh, doing in there, once you're done drawing, you can see it's still gonna be pointing to the right spot. That's all that blue grid is doing is it's just determining what plane you are drawing on so that when you come in after, it's not 
the and you rotate the arrows not pointing out here into into blank space so the drawing tool's great and and like i said uh these lines these this arrow i drew or if i drew a circle or anything i made my own little labels uh those carry over when it comes to your favorites your tours if i were to share that with carly uh again this would carry over too so that's another added bonus before the drawings were would not be able to be uh, saved as part of a favorite so that's a handy trick there and were there any other questions i only had one other item anyway so and we have a couple minutes for questions too uh, we have uh, one quick one from Olena. Uh, will we be able to add a label to the arrow? Uh, sort of. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll show you what I mean. Yeah, so you can come in here. Let me pull it up again and I can uh, click the drawing tool and I can cover this up to whatever, I, whatever plane that I wanna draw on as I showed you before. So you could draw it in there yourself, um, but there isn't like a, a typing feature within the draw tool itself. So in other words, you could combine these things. You could combine the notepads and the draw tool and the, uh, oops, And those sorts of things. So you could sort of make it your own, but there's not an official uh, labeling feature here within the draw tool. You can also add a tag to that as well, in addition to all the drawings and annotations too. If you if you want to get real fancy, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, you can add the tags in there too. Just like uh, just like we showed you before. Great question, which we get a bunch from Anne. Um, also, hi, Anne. It's very nice to hear from you again. Um, if I were to use all the drawing tools with arrows and numbers, could I somehow save it on VB to use as a quiz? Yes, you could. Uh, so you could use that within the quizzing. Now, you couldn't use, let me, let me preface it by saying you wouldn't be able to use them um, say as part of a dissection quiz where they're manipulating it and rotating it and those sorts of things with the lines on there. What you could do is when you're building out say a multiple choice question or something, there's a spot for you to put in a screenshot or an image. So you could download a still image of one of those uh, favorites you've saved and include that into a quiz question. So that's actually a good idea. Now, I, I just wanted to show one other quick thing, and then uh, I know we're sort of short on time, but the one other thing I wanted to make sure you guys knew is within courseware, just to sort of close that loop on the sharing, is not only can you uh, share views with students and colleagues and that sort of stuff, but within your course, you could now, uh, create a new assignment as you normally would. And this page is asking where you'd like to pull from to make an assignment. And I'd like to pull from Atlas. And now you'll see what I mean. Now you can even make an assignment out of your library assets. So I could come in there and say, well, I don't even need to share it with them via a URL, I could just make that into a assignment right here within courseware and they just have to click right on it. So you could really do it either way, depending on if you wanna make it more of an official assignment or if you're, it's more informal and you're just uh, sending them some tips and tricks with, uh, with, via sharing a URL. But that was, uh, that was the only other thing I wanted to mention. Was there any last minute questions in there? 
if anyone does have any questions, do not hesitate to. Oh, yep. Uh, one from Barbara, um, and I was actually just about to, uh, to touch upon this, so you beat me to it. Um, can we see uh, other explanations on how to use visible body and do we have them in one location? So yes, um, on our YouTube channel, uh, we have all of our previous office hours and webinars, um, but we also have a really robust support site that um, has uh, tons and tons of, you know, short tutorial videos and, um, you know, uh, written out step-by-step -step, um, instructions for how to do certain things. And um, I will also be sharing that in tomorrow's email. So you don't have to go hunting around for it. Oh, no, Carly, you got it. <laughs> it's in the chat, but don't, don't worry if, you know, if uh, you don't, you know, grab that link, um, I will be sending it out tomorrow and, uh, and keep an eye out for that email because it is going to be chock full of, of follow-up items. We covered a lot today. So yeah. And that's the thing is you guys don't have to memorize what we talked about today. And it's not like the only way that you can, uh, recall this info is by watching this again. There are articles that, a new one that talks about this sharing capability and exactly where you click and all that, all that stuff. And additionally, I always recommend watching the office hours and the webinars, which are both on our Visible Body YouTube page. Um, it shows you other examples of how other professors are using it in their courses, along with all different very popular questions that many of you have asked today that are explained in the past webinars, as well as this one, since it was recorded. We record them all. They're all there on the YouTube page. So highly, highly, highly suggest them. <laughs> are we getting a certificate of attendance? I wish I could hand them to you personally. I do. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I, I guess the only uh, certificate of attendance that you'll be getting is the follow-up email with, yeah. uh, with, with all of the, the great stuff. So I will be sharing um, a, a lot with you guys tomorrow. Um, the auto-graded labs course, um, some tours for you to, um, to uh, you know, have yourself or share with your students, um, YouTube links, some support articles. Um, so stay tuned. It's, it's all coming tomorrow. And by the way, if anyone does on a serious note need, because sometimes people for uh, professional development reasons once in a while, do request a, a certificate of completion or something. Uh, we do have one. So if that, I don't see oh. who that one person was, we don't use it that often, but we have one somewhere in our system that we could send that person or anyone that, uh, that might need it for, for that reason. I, I didn't know that. I didn't so. either. But what I was going to say is, do you know if that's in our internal help center? If that form is? It could be. It okay. could be. Yeah. We'll find it. Um, if, um, if, if, you, if you need that, I mean, I, I'll find it and I'll also include it in, you know, the follow-up email. Or um, if you want, um, you could reach out to your rep and, and they can send it to you. Yeah, I was about to say. Yeah, um, maybe that's the best way to uh, do it for those few people that might actually need it for yeah. that reason. I was just about to say, if you do not know who your rep is, um, just put your email address in the chat and I'll make sure to get your rep in touch with you as well. That's a great idea, yes. And I'm gonna say. Well, perfect, we have a couple of them. Yeah, Garrison and. Uh, yes, uh, Gita, if, if you could drop your email in there, we'll send you one. And uh, yeah, and uh, and and don't worry, Carly. Um, I will uh, when uh, I'm recording this, and uh, it gives me the chat log as well, so we can grab everybody's emails. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, let me know if you guys need help sending those out or anything. Definitely. Okay. Uh, Anne asked me a specific question, and Anne, I just want to answer you. Um, is the Sinai 
and I'm going to completely mispronounce the second part of the school, is that also located in South Dakota? Yes, he will be a rep for both of those from continuing on. And that's Tom. Okay. Tom's the best. Everybody's the best. He's like the best yeah. team ever. <laughs> yes, of course I am. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I know we've, we've kept some people over and thank you for sticking with us. Um, and if you have any questions, we, we always encourage you, reach out to your rep. They are the best, they, they're the best. Like what, what can I say? Like our, our, our education team is just like the bomb.com. So, um, but also um, keep an eye out for tomorrow's uh, follow-up email. There's gonna be a lot. <laughs> so um, uh, otherwise, thank you so much for joining us today and um, we'll see you next time. Thanks everyone. Alrighty.